Um, so thank you for coming. Thank you for the interest. Um, and so the uh, main plot of our talk um, is about Moscow conceptualism, its practice, and um, I would say uh, the um, uh, how this experience can be transformed, can be trans transmitted to the current situation also in Russian art. So, in first question uh, that I would uh, formulate, so it states like, what conditions and actions enable the artist to maintain their integrity and not to be silenced? So, I would formulate this question uh, a bit wider uh, and uh, would uh, like to ask both of you. So, um, what were the uh, basic models of communication uh, within the um, artist, artistic community? So uh, we all know about friendship circles. We could uh, remember about um, uh, the collective action strategy. We could uh, uh, remember about uh, so-called school of Stretinsky Boulevard, meaning that uh, this um, closeness, that this um, community was formed by geographical proximity, for example. Uh, and Vadim, you uh, belong to younger generation, uh, let's say, of Moscow conceptualism. I'm around 60. <laughs> so, um, younger than. Younger, younger than uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, canonic conceptualism. Uh, so, what were the uh, strategies um, uh, in, your, uh, in your circle, in your practice? So, what were the main communication models? How you... Uh, supported the uh, this communication in what were the main tools of it? I did so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> answer. Maybe I, I, I will try to uh, uh, maybe for beginning to make a little bit frame of uh, what does it mean Moscow conceptualism and included your uh, un uh, questions here. Yeah? And uh, maybe this will be more clear and la later we can fill it this frame. Uh, maybe I can s uh, say. Um, four notion to maybe understand this is not canon notions but maybe it will be more understandable what we had did it first it's uh, all notions it's very funny in frame of art basel first notion it's independence that's mean it's all artists uh, three generations artists in before perestroika time working without any institutions any galleries any creators any art historian this is you keep keep in mind. This is a model of what we did it in this time. This is not usual, and um, of course, artists decided where is to make exhibitions, uh, one day exhibitions in flats, studios, or to go to outside of Moscow. How it's uh, group collective actions practiced long time till today even. This is very important. And it's uh, who will we read? Invi invite uh, uh, some writers like Sarokin or it's uh, Rubinstein to read in some studios. All these one, two days exhibitions historical now in Russian uh, culture. Uh, second, independent. All artists who, three generations, again, I say that uh, twice, um, works and get money not from selling of the work. This is why this term is funny in Art Basel. All of us, are, all of us working in publishing house, many of us, for instance, Kabakov, Bulatov, Vasiliev, Garachovsky, there was its book illustrator. My generations, they, they were also working like in publishing house, and we were working like a book designer. That means we were independent from two very important positions in art system. Second, it's... Uh, Distance, distance to distance of artists to every directions, a theory, or their self criticism to themselves. This is again, that's very important things, and this is positions uh, which is um, give you distance to what happens around. It's uh, self criticism, give you reduce outer ambitions, which again very presented today in Art Basel. Ego, centrism, ego positions very much. We, by situations, we reduce that by, because we was pressed by situations and um, 
this is give a uh, little bit positions to see what another artist uh, made it in this time. And um, for instance, we start to collect, uh, it, again, it was no institutions, no galleries, no archive. And artists start, every from us, start to collect uh, archive or materials to future. This is, was our positions. I have collections, for instance, also. And this is a uh, punct, uh, point. It's uh, go to another one, third one. It's called artists like institutions or artists like Archivarius. Again, this is positions of presented Moscow conceptualism school. Uh, give you an uh, image when it's artist try to look to in other directions, not only focusing to themselves. And uh, of course, this is, uh, again, I, I will say about myself. Uh, I have very good uh, archive of Moscow conceptualism, which I'm start to collect in the beginning of 80s, and make focusing when I came to the um, Germany in, in 89, and I have very good uh, archive, and I made publishing, uh, I made a, a few editions, quite important, and collections of uh, very good collections of my generations of artists. And last one, sorry. And it's uh, very funny. Um, I would like to say and mention that because it's for me, this is very important. Activity without money. Thinking without money. I have this knowledge and I know what does not mean. And uh, I guess so, you have to know this knowledge also somehow in your inside of deep in your brain. <laughs> This is very important when you spend your money for some events, for publishing. And this is very important to present, to protect somehow uh, pressing of art market today. This is frame, which I make it for Moscow conceptualism. Let's try to feel it. And I like this frame, especially made in Art Basel, at Art Basel during the um, most important um, art fair in the world. So it's a good frame. No money it means to make art. Um, uh, I'd like to, um, uh, to ask you, um, uh, because another quite important plot uh, is uh, related with the, all those people uh, uh, you, uh, your colleagues, who took a uh, real huge effort to keep the integrity of um, Russian artists in the West, in the States or in Europe. And I know that you have quite a remarkable story um, uh, related to uh, the exactly to keeping this integrity of uh, Russian conceptualist artists, uh, in particular in New York. So, what is what is uh, what is the story? Uh, could you please tell more how, from the let's say outside, you contributed uh, to the um, uh, to the keeping of this integrity? Um, I don't know. First, I would like to say several things about the title, Silent Resistance. What does it really mean? How can resistance be silent? If you resist, you are not silent by definition. Uh, where this, it depend, I mean, it can be thousands of people co who can hear you, or 100 people, but it's not already being silent. And uh, especially because art world uh, everywhere is a very small community. So no artist in the world is really heard by thousands and thousands of people anyway. But on the other hand, it's an interesting term because what it really means in the context of the Russian art is that it did not have any access to press or museums or galleries or any kind of system which promotes, traditionally promotes art. And that, I guess, what was silencing it on that broader uh, level, which Western artists do not know, because most Western artists can find a way to press. Even if you are very bad, some, someone will write about you, especially today. Um, so what I guess I was doing in New York when where I came in the middle of 70s is sort of giving a voice to Russian art, trying to get it heard in museums, galleries, and in press. 
And uh, not only to write about myself, but even more importantly, to have other people, New York press or uh, New York critics, art critics, to say something and to express their opinion about that culture. And the, it's very difficult to really understand what a hard job it was. Because today, the idea of an outsider, an artist outsider, is very much common and very much accepted. In fact, the art world, all it does is looking for outsiders today. That's not what was happening in the art world of the 80s or late 70s. Art world, Western art world, was not looking for any artist who was not part of New York or some European communities, such as Germany, a little bit Italy, and that's about all. So to promote someone who was not only Russian, not only silenced, but also completely there was no communication between the countries, let's say between America and New York, uh, and uh, Russia, it was almost impossible job. So I think, first of all, I want to thank all Russian artists, not all, Moscow conceptualists, because some artists were, no, could not be really uh, voiced because they were just too provincial for New York art world. But Moscow conceptualism and the movements like Sotsart or Aptart, of which uh, Vadim is very much a member, had the great chance to be really heard in New York art world, which was very tough, as I said, and very difficult to penetrate. And that made my job much easier and very interesting and uh, exciting. So I think, uh, but um, if we, I think also generally we could talk about the concept of resistance in the much broader, because I think artists in general have love-hate relationship with resistance, because they cannot live without resistance, but they also hate when someone sort of resists them, uh, when gi someone gives them a problem. So it's a very interesting issue, and I think it always existed, and I hope it will always, it will continue to exist, because artists need resistance, and artists need to resist. Um, so I guess for now. Um, and uh, resistance taken, um, taken as a positive term, uh, brings us back to uh, current situation in Russia and um, uh, I would say the, um, the increasingly uh, restricting context uh, where the artists should operate uh, and um, from being uh, like being uh, an art critic, a curator with a huge Western, uh, with a huge uh, experience of making exhibitions all over the world. So how do you see now uh, from, let's say, a bit outside the whole situation in Russia? So uh, w uh, if we will continue this uh, metaphor, uh, or this sound metaphor, um, uh, of silence or reduced sound. Um, uh, what's, uh, what is the nature of these initiatives of local mean, meant, uh, Russian artists? Uh, where is the battle happening and who are the opponents? So how do you perceive it? How do you see it? I think uh, actually in your initial questions, which I got by mail, you, you had a very important word. It's the enemy. We don't know anymore who is our enemy. We knew very well who was the enemy in the 80s, and of course, in the, before that, in the 70s, and starting from the beginning of modernism. The role of an enemy was very well defined. And the issues which artists need to pursue to resist the enemy, it can be two or three enemies. It doesn't have to be one enemy. But more or less, they coincided even between Moscow conceptualism and New York art world of the 80s and late 70s. This, this doesn't exist anymore. We don't really know where it will come from. And because we don't know, we cannot fight it at all. And in Russia, I think it's even harder to fight it. And I'm not going to get into your local problems. You are the curator of a Russian museum. I'm not. But so you will know better what your problems are in terms of restrictions. But I think that the biggest problem from my point of view, because I've been watching Russian art world since Perestroika, I mean watching physically, not from New York, but actually visiting Russia, uh, that the idea of contemporary art was dropped like a nuclear bomb on Russian society without any preparation, without any education, just dropped. And if for people like Vadim and 
artist of his circle, it was great pleasure, all, thing, all things familiar, because they had so much communication with the Western world prior to Perestroika. For general public, it was completely not clear what contemporary art, even what modernism was, because you know most modernist art was hidden in storages in Russian museums. So they didn't really know what modernists were resisting or what contemporary art was resisting and what is really, what is really a part of, what, what are the issues which are already so familiar for modernists and contemporary artists. And that's, I think, where big um, conflict occurred. And I think it, now, it's, if during perestroika such conflicts were very dangerous because the idea of repression was so repulsive for everyone because they lived for decades with repressive ideas. Then later, already let's say in the 2000, in the decade of 2000, the first decade, they sort of forgot that they were repressed and they started repressing the audience themselves. And I think it's more audience than even the government. I, don't, I was doing the Russian pavilion in 2015, no one ever said the word to me, what I can curate and what I cannot curate, and neither to the artist. And you, you were part of the another pavilion, and you can tell us if anyone controlled you. That's important because you actually... Uh, in, in this time, it was uh, not control me, but it's... Uh, you think now it's more? For instance, uh, we talked with Yuri Albert, who yeah. was in, for next after me, and he was in uh, competitions. And when he was lost these competitions, we called to each other and we say, are you happy? We cancel it? He said, yes. Because time, political times, was totally different already. Yeah. If, I may, if I may remember to the public kindly, so we are talking yeah. about Russian pavilion. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's yeah, in Venice, yeah, in Venice. In Venice, yeah. because uh, both our heroes used to be involved. Uh, in different roles uh, to the Russian Pavilion in different years, because Vadim uh, used to be uh, in Russian Pavilion in Venice 2015. 13. Uh, 13, yeah. So, and um, uh, you were uh, in charge of. Uh, yeah, but that's what I was saying. The one which Albert said, thank God, I'm not, yeah. I, have, I was curating this, and yeah. no one repressed anyone. But what I'm saying is, I think the repression is really coming from the audience which here in the West you, you very rarely can find because the audience is so sophisticated in art, in the experience of art, that even if they don't like it, they know how to deal with it. And that's an incredibly important difference between Russian audience and Western audience. But then um, I would uh, ask you if we are talking again about uh, uh, let's say edu educated audience or audience who has like uh, experience uh, in two or three generations. Uh, you been uh, uh, you have mentioned uh, a good a very good formula. Uh, artist as an art institution, artist who fulfills all the functions of a keeper, of an artist, of a, um, a fundraiser, and all all the functions that are now very common in the contemporary infrastructure. So in terms of education of the public, um, uh, what artists uh, as institution uh, could do, could, how he could contribute to the education of the public? Because I think this is uh, the real, uh, the real uh, problem and the essence of the impossibility uh, uh, of love of contemporary art so far in Russia, for example. But this is more questions to you because it's no, no, you it's from Garage and you have you. no you have <laughs> educations program, you buy archives. I exactly. think your organization. So I should announce to, again yeah. that recently Garage uh, has bought yeah. uh, that mean I, I uh, took Vadim's all my archive. So you are not institution anymore. No, I did it <laughs> that, but I took all my materials to the West. Yeah? And mm. I'm creating Berlin, my archive. I have all my archive and everything's in, in Moscow or in Berlin. And that's mean I be uh, jumping from uh, Moscow. I feel it's it's enough what I did it in, in, in around <laughs> 35 years, yeah, for Moscow for Russian culture. And now I I, I would like to uh, feel I can be out. I cannot more uh, involve in that. You take these positions. Well, right? But also, yeah. you know, that's yeah. a typical like unofficial tradition, arrogant artist. <laughs> yeah, because they never had that experience. The public was absolutely 
away from they they didn't no aim i'm at not agree because it's it's uh, again it's before perestroika it was uh, excellent people around who watch what we did it this is what it's we know yeah, yeah, 20 but, 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 or 100. But, but you know, it's, I remember, for instance, first exhibitions uh, after Perestroika. Of course, before I'm, for instance, in, in private apartment exhibitions, I'm collect uh, some ask people to write something. Uh, it was very nice, funny answer about, but later, uh, Club Avantgardiste, for instance, I ask again people to describe, and first time our uh, small group touching with reality. And this is was so boring, so <laughs> boring text, you know? And yeah. of course you, uh, intu you know, in during 27 years after, or th 30 years after Perestroika, mm -hmm. of course in Moscow, uh, people educated quite good. But if you go wider, it's nothing. Still, it's uh, questions about Malevich Square, it's art or not. Yeah, it's incredible. One, it's it's, it's not, not possible, not it's possible. It's still you know? Konchilovsky, the yeah. famous filmmaker who asks the yeah. question. No, it's it's question, not even yeah. the general public, that's the, yeah. that's the issue. Yeah. But, but that's very typical though, because you also very much depend on the milieu, on, the, on your co co circle of artists for sort of improvement, I mean before, in the past. Yeah. And I think that's also very modernist because, as you know, all modernist circles really cared about their community. They didn't care what people, they were in fact trying to annoy people, but no, definitely I, I'm not. Change. <laughs> change. <laughs> yeah. I change in Berlin. I bring all my archive in Berlin, all my collections, yeah? And now I'm organizing, in, again, apartment exhibitions in my place, yeah? So back to the roots, basically. It's called yeah. Free Home. And we presented, for instance, first exhibitions was with young German uh, artists. Second was with Vladimir Sichov, photographer, which is first exhibitions of this photographer in Germany. Yeah, I would like to say it's mentioned that. Second was it's Yaroslav Schwarzstein, who is a great illustrator of uh, Vlad Vladimir Sarokin, for instance. And this is important. This is I'm trying to organize it in other positions with in no, I'm using knowledge. So still this is what we talk about. Institutional impulse is very strong. It's very powerful. Yeah, in but your it's practice, again, right? it's no commercial project. Again, I'm yeah, start. Sure. I'm start talking sure. about that. No work without money. Thinking without money. Funny, uh, funny notion. But I really would like to say this is still important for me. You can come to uh, exhibitions and and buy works. But we, like organize it, didn't take any percent, any. We spent only my money. This is very important. This is reality. If we lost that reality, we will be have market, really strong market. At least we have to get in this is, of course, I'm not uh, confrontate or not uh, competitions with art market, a very small artist. But it's uh, in art spaces should be art territorium, should be small sectors of critics, artists, curators who spend money, them who is get money, not in yeah, wage just, sponsors, yeah. you know? Just and make small system. exhibitions, professional, like it was in before Perestroika, it was uh, two days exhibitions, it was very professional and now historical. This is we have to find, it's my positions, artist positions. I'm create myself not only like artists, like figure in culture, with archive, with publishing, and that's all. And that means it's, uh, this is good, uh, should be good impulse for another artist to create same things in the West. There are, definitely, uh, who, who, create, who operate, let's say, in just uh, a bit different systems, right? A bit um, uh, alternated from the um, uh, main processes which we, uh, which we see, which are happening in Venice or uh, Art Basel, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I think we are sort of, um, uh, uh, if uh, the public has um, any questions, or probably uh, Margarita or Victor want to... But want to actually another question, which uh, Ooh, may be we, interesting, is what one? West can learn from Moscow conceptually, if yeah, anything? Uh, <laughs> what West can learn from, uh, from uh, I mean, partly Vadim has working already... Money. Has already oh, working without money. money has actually. already partially yeah. um, uh, answered this question. Uh, but I think uh, more or less um, uh, this experience um, is noted. So probably you have yeah. uh, another I perspective, yeah, no, another I mean, an I answer. I just want to, 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 to mention, I think, because if you live through several periods in contemporary art, uh, let's say, as I lived since the 70s, uh, 
you understand that you really cannot learn anything from any other period. Because art so much dependent on what you feel about contemporaneity and whom you like, whom you don't like, whom you resist, like Vadim is saying, then before he resisted these people, now he resists money. So that's very important. That's what he feels is important now. And you can't, uh, even his children already will not feel the same way about what they have to do, let's say, if they are artists. So I think this is the problem. When we look at artworks, we, of course, don't learn anything. We only learn the artworks. We don't learn the background which is behind them. And as an art historian, I always try to recreate that uh, background, of course. And I always feel I'm doing the right thing because I always find the right document which I imagine to find beforehand. And when I find it, I always think, oh, I was thinking the right way, otherwise the document wouldn't exist. So that's at least for an art historian, it's an incredible um, uh, sort of search, detective work. But uh, I think in general, it's very hard to learn anything from a previous generation because it just uh, so much, as I said, uh, intervened in so many different things we live through every day. Uh, but of course, I think the idea of what is really lacking, I think if there's one thing which is lacking now in contemporary art, it's of course communication between artists, not between dealers and artists, not between curators and artists, not between critics and artists, between artists and artists. No, may I make one? Uh, yeah. No, I think so. This is, it's again, it's uh, again my project in, in Berlin called Artist to Artist. Yeah. But this is not, uh, uh, again, it's I prefer if uh, in this frame uh, will come its curators or art critics also. Yeah, yeah. But it's not, not uh, for, for talking, for dialogue. You know, yeah, it's like they, artists, for instance, yeah. not only like to create something, you know. I think so we lost this is dialogue in, yeah. in private space. Yeah, in and, private and, space. And, yeah. So only yeah. talking about private and space. And again, yeah. we lost a little bit human uh, f format. We mm. talk about globalistic things. Again, you look out and look that. Mm -hmm. I talk all, all uh, these conversations. We talk about small piece which artists can do today in such a pressure of art market or of art system. You know? uh, can you then, t uh, Vadim? Can you tell them more because you uh, you're one of those rare artists who the entire life preferred to collaborate with very different artists. So basically, uh, I mean, you worked alone, but your uh, but your collaborations with so different artists. Uh, um, is, a, is a key point. Oh, so thank, you for, thank you for these questions mm -hmm. because I'm started in 78. I'm started from, from collaborations later with Victor Scarces in 10 collaborations till today. It's some of the was for a few years. And I would like to say only one thing. Collaborations, very important methods, but not totally not accepted of art market. For instance, not possible to sell works of collaborations. All my collaborations, except Victor Scarces, was totally kicked out. Nobody interested that because this is something between. But the, uh, the type of this collaboration, your collaborators, uh, so you did work together with different artists, but uh, were there some uh, people, some uh, persons who were not artists? Who, who yes, but you, this yeah. is again, it's uh, when you started, these are methods. You, all artists came to a uh, dead end, you know? or have the feel it limit of con uh, continuations. And collaborations, it's very good uh, methods when you start from zero and continue and continue till finish it. And I guess it's, this is, again, it's very contemporary today. Collaborations today, it's very open and for future when it's artists start to more collaborate. It's, if people do it or they should no, do it? No, they should, yeah, they should do yeah, it, should yeah, do it. more and it. more. Yeah. They collaborate, they, yeah, so we will remember and this is, and and this is will be change our market. Them. If, oh, if artists it. start to collaborate and start to buy works from each other for 100 euro, it's okay. This is, will be another, a little bit another world. And collaborations also very profitable for curators because you don't have to deal with one persona. You sort of, it's already diluted, you know, all these ambitions. It's 50%, it's, it's so it's easier to, de to deal can, with. But 50% of money also. <laughs> or it can become even harder when yeah. uh, you work in uh, 150 it's, or 200%. So it's, it, it really depends. 
so I think we, we we have quite a quite an optimistic conclusion about I mean two of them or three of them. Uh, resistance is always good for the artist, or at least it can appear as a very positive thing in, term, in terms of artist practice and uh, collaboration between the artists. And if I may, uh, to use this term called network, so artist network or real collaboration, uh, collab yeah. human Not collaboration, network. friendship. You know, this is again, it's yeah. very important to say Language. network, it's internet. It's not touching. Yeah. I would like okay. to today touch. No, touch. Especially women. You know, touching, yeah. you know. This is very important again. Very important. It's also interesting how the language changes. Uh, when we had, when I was functioning in the 80s in New York, there are certain words you could say and you could not say. Not politically correct, but the art language, really discourse, which sort of has its own vocabulary. So it's interesting that right away you use the word network, which for me horrible and for him as well. But for you Discourse it's normal. So it's very interesting, but it, it's very important what words you are using and how you frame your discourse, really. Okay, so then let's, uh, let's stay to collaboration. What is one-to-one -one relationships, uh, which can potentially uh, 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 bring uh, great results? So, and what, uh, what's, what are the uh, lessons, so to say, of most con conceptualism? So, I don't, I don't really sure that there are the lessons, and I'm uh, ready to agree with you that um, uh, the art practice in each period, it's about a uh, perception of the contemporane contemporaneity. So, um, uh, I would like to thank you for the talk and uh, our public uh, for listening to us. And in case you have any questions, we will try to answer the questions. Um, so I know you were talking about how you think artists should improve communication with one another. Um, how do you think artists nowadays can get around doing that? Oh my god. <laughs> Let's talk. You artist? No. No, again, it's uh, you, uh, artist. Uh, oh, it's, uh, I have to start from zero. <laughs> A little bit complicated to answer, but again, it's uh, my knowledge when I was very young, 19 years old, in the end of 70s, and when I was 20, I started to collect uh, works of my friends. Nobody interested in that in this time. Now I have very good collections of my generations of artists. I have to collect uh, papers, which is like uh, was in garbage. This is uh, artists should be reduce your ego, yeah, or in good way and try to look around. This is first point to young uh, artist. I guess so. And continue and continue. That this is, I'm not recommended my way because our hive really kill me. And this is its uh, take uh, from uh, beginning of 80 till 2014. For instance, I'm film it. 220 Russian exhibitions on the West. Myself, nobody asked me. And I have in other materials, you know. This is my initiative, and I'm so tired to continue that. But this is what its artists understand my activity in many artists for from in, all three generations. An, an institution uh, really uh, understood your activity. Why, why now? So your video archive is at Garage. Only uh, part. Only part. part. Sorry. <laughs> but but I think uh, oh, in, in very simple. Uh, answer to this, how do you do it, uh, is the, um, I mean, you cannot do it, forget it, you won't be able to, because no one drops the papers, no one picks it up anymore. People know what to keep in and know how to sell it, so there is no naivete about how art functions anymore, so that's how it allowed to do it to him, he was very naive and very, very young, but I think what is important is to explain why collaboration was so possible in Russia of that period. Because all people did, they were talking, they were discussing. People don't do it anymore. They do it like this, to show themselves and to show how important they are. Well, we are, or they are. But they don't do it for the pleasure of it. So he, I'm sure he started also his collaboration with conversation, like Comer and Melamed. They started their collaboration with conversation. They used to say, we're not artists, we are conversationalists. 
and ended up <laughs> with yeah. the conversation. No, I with fight, say. not with the conversation. <laughs> with a fight between wives, not them. <laughs> so what is interesting, if you don't have a desire, if you don't have a desire to converse, you only, if you only have a desire to meet a dealer or a curator, you cannot collaborate. It's impossible. Hello. As an outsider, I think of Moscow conceptualism uh, being a dramatic change of thinking. Uh, none of you have really talked about how Moscow conceptualism has changed thinking. Could, could each of you give a little brief way how you think the whole thing changed our way of thinking? Whose way of thinking? Whose your way of thinking, or Western way of thinking, Eastern way of thinking? Wherever you like. No, that's too broad. You have to say... Wh which we live in the world. You, you're, you're isolating yourselves. You're talking as though you're, we're, 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 we're separate people. We're not. Yeah, sorry, but we talk, it's today's topic about Moscow conceptualism, and yeah. we talk about that. But, yeah? Well, what I'm, we, we what to, I'm complaining about... We try to really be in, in narrow, this, in the corridor, you know? What I'm complaining about is you're not talking about the thinking, and it was a great. It had a big impact on the on the world. And it, that it did. This is news to us, really. If you can tell well, that, us, that's exactly my point. But then you should tell us what the influence is. <laughs> not we shouldn't say because I, as an art well, historian and art, then go to curator, Istanbul and see the exhibition in where? the Pyramid Museum. <laughs> you where? have to go to Istanbul to see. Oh, I see. So it changed <laughs> the the thinking of uh, Turkish people, maybe. They're no, still friends of round Russia. Round the world, round the world. I don't believe it, but uh, I'm glad you think this way. But you certainly didn't give us an example how it changed the I'm thinking. I'm asking you because you haven't Be been talking about no, it. No, I can only say that I was trying and trying and trying to change people's thinking about Russian art, and no matter how many books I published, how many shows I curated, it's a two-way compensation. Changed. It's not changed at all. In fact, even the opinion about the avant-garde. The historical avant-garde is still very shaky. You know, I mean, so I don't know what you are talking about. And if you know, you tell us. Well, you can have my catalogue from the Pira Museum, Double Think, Double Vision, and Yuri Albert, Vadim's friend, is a, mm. a star in it. Yeah, but that's your, your work. It's not changing. Why no, do it's you the think artist's just, work, not so, mine. No, but I mean, you think if you did a show, you changed something. This is a very old-fashioned. Oh, uh, why did I say know? that? I didn't say that at no, all. You You're trying to put words into no, my mouth. You said I'm sorry, yourself. you've had your chance and you don't want to talk about the thinking. I don't want to. That's all I've been doing all my life. Listen. Well, that's what you think, but it, you said it didn't have an effect on people, so you can't have been doing because it well I'm enough. Because I'm realistic. Nothing has an effect on anything. So I'm just realistic, that's all. No, it's, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think so, we're I'm out of limits, I think so. I don't yeah? know. Of the, our discussions, no, I think so. The provocation is that we really didn't talk about the core of Moscow conception. First of all, it's completely impossible because it's just too complicated. But secondly, you should read. We will be very happy to listen to you telling us what the impact is, but you don't uh, tell want... Tell us why it's no uh, Russian gallery in, in Art yeah, Basel. Exactly. Please tell us, explain. I can explain you, but can, can you explain that? No, I mean... No. This, this, is, this is its problem, you know? This is no uh, one gallery in Art Basel. No gallery in Moscow anymore. Okay, three, four, five gallery. This is one good uh, gallery which I know, you know, presented in some... This is its... If we start to talk about problem of Russian, it was for a few hours. I would like... Don't want to continue. But this is, again, it's, we have many problems, and we can talk about that. Documenta, did you find one Russian artist? Uh, there are Russian artists, but all of them are dead. <laughs> what? <laughs> all of them are dead. It's all oh. dead artists. Filonov, This, is, it's, yes, this is very interesting, you know? No yeah. one artist in Documenta? It's strange for me, you know? But uh, even in Venice, it's usually one, two. I mean, it's not more... No, it's at least some. Yeah. You know, but it's, uh, this is for me, it's surprising, you know. And again, we have problem in Moscow with a gallery system. It's totally damaged by, in, uh, by institutions also. Institutions is great in Moscow, really great, I like it. But they took uh, really initiative and they kill all gallery system. This is its very interesting uh, questions, you know. 
Of course, because it's, they took artists immediately. Artists should be boiling, you know, like a zuppe, you know, and no, without the, any connections. But now institutions, if some talented artists, they took uh, and, and, and bring them to exhibitions, start to talk. Same with art historian, you know. This is, you find many nuances in West, we, how in Berlin, 600 galleries. In Russia, five, three, four. Let's say this ten. is not good balance. What? Let's say ten. Yeah. Who who participated in, 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 in art messes? I mean, for like in during uh, during it's like Russia, past big years, country, so, you know? uh, XL Gallery Huge. used to be here, Regina Gallery used Look to be to here, China. but not anymore. Look to China. Compare. They start. We start together in, after Perestroika time. Look to China. What happens in in China? And what happens in Russia now? Okay, I'm stop it. Comes hotter, hotter. We have one more question, I think. Okay, so I will ask a question about uh, Russia decline, as you have described. I hope you will not jump jump on me like on on other person. It's uh, uh, talking talking about the uh, silence, silent resistance. The question is about the connection to the political situation in Russia, because as you are describing uh, art scene and thinking about Russia and the decline of the statehood, decline of the country, and the increase of limits of the civil liberties and the decrease of the uh, free institutions in Russia. Russia, though over the few hundred years, produced a great culture in different areas. A question is about uh, speculation, a little bit about the future. How do you see the future under those circumstances for art? No, I think uh, so this is very big questions. Really, I, I, can, can I, I, just I say feel it. It's uh, we need more time to really to talk, talk about that. Sorry. And this I think really it's a universal question. I don't see future in any art, not only in <laughs> Russian. So you're very optimist. However. So I would say only one thing about decline. So we are not talking in these categories of decline or of uh, upcoming, um, upcoming kingdom of light and everything good. Uh, so the category, categories now are quite different. It's not about declining. Declining means that the, the, there are two poles or more poles and uh, we are moving from one to another, et cetera, et cetera. The situation, and when uh, I was using, or probably it's Marie uh, was the first who used this restricting context, it's very strange now. So because no one really feels or knows what is allowed and what is not, where, uh, where the border is. So what can be censored and what's not. It's like a constant um, uh, exploration uh, of the boundaries. And it's very strange state of mind and state of art. And we are not talking about uh, decline, negative, positive, or something like that. The artists now uh, in Moscow, in Russia, uh, it's more about, I would say, uh, trying, to put, trying to fill these boundaries, if there are. So it's a very complex situation, and it's definitely not about uh, decline. If we talk, if we take this uh, very um, uh, suggestive Western modern of doing right, you know, so it's more difficult, it's more complex situation, to my mind. 